Welcome, this is Zoe. This is a story called Listening In, inspired by the novel The Long Room by Francesca Kay, about a spy who falls in love with the wife of the target he's hired to surveil. By the way, if you like slow, detailed, and thoughtful novels, you might like the long room. The following story I've written is about unrequited love, a subject common to all creatures, I think, including animals. One loving another more than their loved back. Unrequited love can happen in any relationship, not only romantic. It can occur between friends, family, even our companion animals. What you'll be listening to are the thoughts and feelings of one person for the other. To set the scene, they've just been on the phone and the conversation has come to an end. However, one person doesn't want to hang up, so they remain on the line while the other is unaware the line is still open. I'm not condoning listening in on someone else's private life. This is just an exploration of what it feels like to love someone more than they seem to love in return. It's also about acceptance and healing. If you relate to this story, I hope it helps you in some way, and even if you're lucky to not relate to it, I hope you enjoy listening. At the end, I'll include a quote from one of my favorite films, which sums it all up in a beautiful way. Let's begin. Listening in. Listening on the line. You forgot to hang up. I don't want to let go because it feels like being with you in a room. Like maybe you're looking at the mail on the counter while I make a cup of tea. How do you do it? How do you not seem to care we are miles away from one another? I don't want to hang up, so I don't. I'll follow you around for a little while, tag along behind the way I used to do before we didn't see each other very often, then before we didn't see each other anymore at all. This feels like taking care of you somehow, making sure you don't trip as you go up the stairs to take a nap, he said. I'll just dangle here for a while, if that's all right. I know it's not all right, and I feel guilty for infringing on your privacy. Please forgive me. But for just this once, God, allow me this little space where I can love and not feel rejected or unimportant or forgotten. You and I are like different birds searching for the same morsels. At least, that's what I used to believe. I'm beginning to think maybe you just cannot, for whatever reason, Love me back the way I'd love for you to love me too. You almost drop the line, assuming it's severed. But I'm still here refusing my conscience. I should not be doing this, but I love you. It's a delicate situation. You might break it. Seems you're always the one in control. Tenuous, the connection slips through space as you climb the stairs with mute little me in your hand. You mumble, annoyed, uttering someone else's name. 
I lean in toward your life invisible to me, having only these sounds. Everything sounds metallic, as though you and your world have shrunk, contained in an empty oil drum, tapping. Your thumb on the TV remote? Water pouring from the tap in the bathroom like hail on a tin roof. Now quiet again. Then steely, unintelligible voices scraped together as flatware in a drawer. You take the phone from your pocket. You're out of the oil drum now and everything is dry and fibrous billowing like a storm, footsteps as in sand, a door shuts like oars in a boat, some loose coins taken from your pocket and dropped on the night table like scallop and abalone shells stirred in a bucket half full of seawater, you climb into bed Fibers of the sheets sound like surf along the shore. Sifting sands along a beach where we walked hand in hand together a long time ago. Utterances through blankets as you're watching television. I strain to decode just one kind word or precious phrase from you which might signal you still have a heart. I feel guilty listening in on the little we have left, but it's all I have these days. It's like metal detecting, innumerable grains of sand, combing for unlikely treasures along a deserted beach. You would never do such a thing as I'm doing now. Or would you? Have you? I can't help but endear an imaginary you to me, and you know that. It feels like years waiting. Has it been years? Whether or not doesn't matter. Fragments. Remote pieces. I'm like an archaeologist who values a mere ceramic sliver of a cup you drank from, a broken cup you've long forgotten, just a minuscule bit I've needed from you who rarely gives a scrap which might lend me a clearer picture of who you really are. It's so quiet now, only the cellular sea air hiss and your breath rising and falling on the waves. This, our submarine, sinks below its bubbles as you fall asleep. Why do I love you? Something has just occurred to me. I don't feel culpable anymore and don't blame you either. Listening to this gives me a feeling I can treasure, even if you don't. I can keep the memory of you, the real you, the one you were before anyone hurt you. Memories of you when you were happiest are mine to keep. The afternoon I watched you pull weeds in the yard while I trailed along behind you. I'll remember how you'd pick up a nail in the road so it wouldn't cause someone else a flat. How you gave your lunch to a hungry person in the park. I think God keeps our pleasant memories of one another in a book and reads them over and over again, the way we'd walk up and down our private beach spying for unbroken shells. I am gathering shells. 
What are you dreaming about? Do you know, I promise you no matter what, I'll always love you. Seagrasses multiply, whether you cut them back or not. Leaves and sand collect along the driveway of the house, whether you rake it away or not. And love is covered up sometimes in two strong winds. But it'll be all right, I promise. Or else God will have to answer to me when I get there. It feels okay to hang up now. It feels okay to hope that maybe we'll speak again. Do you see me there in your dream? Can you hear me over the roar of the surf? I'm saying that even if this connection to you is spare, it is and always will be everything to me. So, this is the end and not the end of our story. And here's the quote I promised. It's from a film called Marvin's Room. In a conversation between two sisters in the film, Bessie, played by Diane Keaton, and Lee, played by Meryl Streep. Bessie says, Oh, Lee, I've been so lucky. I've been so lucky to have Dad and Ruth. I've had such love in my life. You know, I look back and I've had such, such love. Lee says, they love you very much. Bessie answers, no, that's not what I mean. No, no, I mean that I love them. I've been so lucky to have been able to love someone so much. Thanks for listening in, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Before you go, please like, share, and subscribe, and tick that little bell icon so you'll be notified of future videos and stories. Sending you so much love. Take care out there. Bye-bye for now.